Hare Krishna Maharaj, the end of our pranams. Please accept our respectful obeisances and we will speak. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and Gurudev. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for giving your very valuable time and association to us this morning and enlightening us on the topic of Srimad Bhagavatam, 6th canto, 15th chapter, 5th sloka, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Please take over the call, Maharaj. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Vayam Chatvam Chaye Chame Tu Yakala Chara Charaha Janma Mikyu Yata Paschat Anaivam Anunapi Boho O oh, King, both you and we, your advisors, wives and ministers, as well as everything moving and not moving throughout the entire cosmos at this time, are in a temporary situation. Before our birth, the situation did not exist, and after our death, it will exist no longer. Therefore, our situation now is temporary, although it is not false. Purport. The Mayavadi philosophers say Brahma Satyam Jagat Nityam. Brahma, the living being, is factual, but his present bodily situation is false. According to the Vaishnava philosophy, however, the present situation is not false, but temporary. It's like a dream. The dream does not exist before one falls asleep, nor does it continue after one awakens. The period of dreaming only exists only between these two and therefore is false in the sense that it's impermanent. Similarly, the entire material creation, including our own creation and those of others, is impermanent. We do not lament for the situation in a dream before the dream takes place or after it is over. And so during the dream or during the dreamlike situation, one should not accept it as factual and lament about it. This is real knowledge. Nama on Vishnu Badaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutari Namaste Saraswati Dei Hey Gaura Vali Pachari Nivari Sita Sunyavari Pasyatya Dei Satani Vansha Kalpa Turu Vishya Pipa Sindhu Pei Vajapa Titanam Pavane Jyo Vaishnava Jyo Namaha Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadahar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Hari Rama Hari So in this verse and purport it's describing our situation within this realm of material existence. It is temporary. Before we took birth, it didn't exist for us. And after we leave this body, it will continue not to exist. And during the time we are here, it appears to be factual and real. Of course, there's a class of philosophers, as mentioned here, the Mayavadis, Say it's false. There is an element of truth in that statement. It's false in the sense that it doesn't stand the test of time. But actually, it is factual in the sense that it is Krishna's energy. And Krishna says, Daiviyesha guna maya momo maya dharatya yam eva ye kapadya ante maya etam tarantite. That this material energy of mine is very difficult to overcome. 
The one who takes shelter of me can very easily cross beyond this material energy. So this material energy is one of Krishna's energies. He has three principal energies, and there are many, what well, we say, lesser energies, which support the principal energies. The spiritual energy, which is called um, Antaranga Shakti, the material energy, which is called Bahiranga Shakti, and the living entity, us, in the material energy, called the marginal energy, or Tatasta Shakti. These are the three energies of the Lord, and they're factual. They re they're real in the sense that they work in a certain way, but two of them is eternal, and one is temporary. We are eternal. Jivar Sarupai Krishna and Nitya Das. We have an eternal relationship with the Lord. And we exist eternally. Nahanyate Hanyamani Sarira. For the soul, there is neither birth nor death. Now, having once been, does he ever cease to be? He's unborn, eternal, immutable, primeval, and he's not slain when the body is slain. So our existence, no matter where we find ourselves to be, whether in the material tabernacle or in the spiritual realm, we exist eternally. But in this uh, temporary situation of the material energy, and the analogy here is very appropriate in the dream state, because a dream state apparently is a, a state of false existence. But when we're in it, we actually experience a certain type of reality in that dream state. And we also may have physical reactions on the gross level, even in the dream state. But it is actually what it is. It is a dream state. And therefore, we realize it before we go into the dream and after we leave it, it's simply what it is. It's in a dream. But this material existence in our so-called waking state is another type of dream because it's not factual in the sense that it doesn't stand the test of time. It comes and it also goes. And the identity that we achieve in this material existence is also similar to the identity we take on in the dream. We identify ourselves according to the body we have and the relationships that we connect to in this material body, according to gender, family relationships, uh, nationality, and activities that we perform. And we adopt a certain set of identities based on these activities. But it's because the, the whole situation is just temporary, the identities ultimately are also in the same sense temporary. So taking it from the position of eternality, our, our relationship in this material world is like a dream state. We just come here and we act in a way that is contrary to our actual existence. And we take on many activities like that. And we think they're real. But what does this, uh, this dream state has a certain message to it and a certain benefit from it. Because we continue to exist in this state. Um, what is that? Maya the Lase, Kancho Base, Kancho Hobu, Dubai. Life after life, and Karanam, Munasango Shio, Sarasa Joni, Janmasu, that we traverse the three levels of existence. 14 planetary systems, the three three levels of material existence, higher planets, middle planets, and lower planets. And life after life, according to our activities, based on our desires, we find ourselves in a particular material situation. But it's given to us, not uh, haphazardly, but based on our desires, and our activities. If we have a certain desire and a certain activity, we get a particular body. 
there's one very clear case of this in our Krishna conscious movement. There is one devotee. Now, she is a devotee in the activities of Krishna consciousness. But in her previous life, she was a brahmachari also in the ISKCON movement. And as a brahmachari, this person traveled around and got attached to an, uh, an Indian girl, not in a physical way, but in a very direct, was always thinking about her, thinking about how he would like to marry her. And one day there was a car accident and this brahmachari died in the car accident. And now that same person came back in the form of this Indian girl. And it's interesting because this girl remembers all of her past experiences of being a brahmachari and also the experiences of coming into this world. Krishna gave her that intelligence to in help us with her remember. And because of that, in her present situation, she's very fixed in her Krishna consciousness. She was constantly engaged in cutting on and at the main service she was at home, along with you know, associating with devotees to do the same thing. So she writes about it about her experiences in her previous life, and also how she turned to Krishna conscious by Krishna's direction in this particular way. So this is all, these things are factual, they're not some idea, but according to our desires and activities in the previous life, and the consciousness that we uh, develop at the time of leaving the body, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Yam Yam Bhakti Smaran Bhavan Tantra Antra Kalevan, Sam Sami Vaita Tote Yat Vidata Ram Bhavi Baha. You know, whatever you think of at the time of death, in that, to that situation you will attain to. And of course, our consciousness at the same time of death is generally a collection of our consciousness throughout the entire life, and it manifests in that way at the time we leave the body. But of course, if we think of Krishna in devotion at the time of death and become absorbed in that, then we can free ourselves from this dream life of existence of taking birth, growing old, dying, getting disease, taking birth, getting old, dying. It's a constant cycle that keeps going until the soul no longer has any connection with or any attachment for for this temporary material energy. It's like sometimes when we go to sleep at night, we dream. And in that dream state, we find the dream is very unpleasant. And there is a desire to get out of the dream state even while we're in the dream state. And uh, sometimes we all of, a, all of a sudden wake up, <laughs> come back to our waking consciousness. So, that desire has to be there, otherwise we continue in this dreamlike existence of taking birth and dying in various species of life. And generally, it continues to go life after life after life because the soul has not been convinced that this material world is what it is. It's simply a dream, and that's all. It's almost like we might use an analogy that if you, uh, the happiness in the material world can be compared to trying to eat the object that is reflected in the mirror. If you were to put a, put a bowl of uh, fruit in front of a mirror and you want to eat the object, eat the fruit in the mirror, you can't, although you can see it. It appears to be real. But there is a reality that is beyond this material energy, and that is our eternal home in the spiritual world. That's why the scriptures say, practice devotional service and then go back home, back to Godhead, a place for whence we have come, 
And now we are in this unnatural situation. So in being the unnatural situation, we have to somehow or other, it's like you, uh, you take birth in order so you don't have to take birth again. It's almost like when you walk, you've been to uh, Vrindavan or in many places around there, and many of the holy paths, they have some thorns there, and devotees walk barefoot. And sometimes a thorn, thorn gets stuck in a person's foot and they can't get it out. And so they take another thorn, and using that thorn, they pluck out that thorn and throw both thorns away. So this material world is meant for us to learn a lesson that we don't need to be here to try to falsely enjoy in this dreamlike state and go back home, back to God. And then that is the process of devotional service. And as Srila Prabhupada mentions, that one should not accept it as factual and lament about it. In other words, in, in there are good dreams and there are unpleasant dreams. There are happiness is some kind of form of happiness in this material world. And then there's generally mostly misery. And so we have to, we constantly are going back and forth, trying to struggle in order to attain some happiness. Finding it is not sufficient. We keep up the struggle. And unless we actually seriously take shelter of the Lord in devotional sins, then we constantly cycle in this person, in the cycle of birth and death, life after life after life. It's a punishment for our for, for not desiring our, uh, our prime desire. Our prime desire is according to our nature. Just like you see in this material world, everyone is serving someone. We serve People serve their family members, they serve their friends, they serve the, the social, political, and economic arrangements that are made in this material world. Sometimes they serve uh, an animal, a dog, or a cat. The service propensity is indigenous, or you might say innate, within the living body, a being's existence, cannot be stopped. It cannot be uh, curtailed in any way. And it goes on because that's our nature is to serve. So the logical and the intelligent thing is, if I have to serve, why don't I serve in such a way that that service will bring me back to my actual position of service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead? And that service extricates us or removes us from this cycle of birth and death. Um, there's a beautiful picture that's been painted. You see, in an ocean, a person is drowning. And then you see Krishna coming on his on, on Garuda, and he's reaching down, pick up his friend out of this, uh, this ocean. So this world is like an ocean. It's very difficult to cross beyond this ocean. But with the help of the Supreme Lord that, that comes by the mercy that he gives us in devotional service, we can easily extricate ourselves out of this world and make this uh, particular life we're in the last life in this world. And that is actually the goal of human life, the Tato Brahma Jigyasa. We grow up in this world, we learn all the wrong things. That happiness comes by position, by power, by them having a nice family, by being intelligent and getting a, a good situation in this material world. Um, we're constantly bombarded with lies about actually our existence. Our real existence is our, actually our true nature. And so a devotee will think, why waste time doing things in this world when I could be using that same time to get out? Because time is short. Um, people in the Satya Yuga, they could live up to 100,000 years because the atmosphere was pure. 
and, devo- and, the, and the living beings were fixed in devotion to the Lord. And every yuga, there is a decrease in the duration of life. And in Kali Yuga, the present age we are in, the duration of life is down to the bare minimum. It's 100 years at most. But how many people actually live to 100 years old? I think the average lifespan, of course, it depends on the country, is about uh, 75, 80, 85 years old. That's average. And in some countries, it's even lower than that. Of course, in some countries, it's more too. But in general, life is very short. And so that whatever that time is, it becomes the opportunity to extract ourselves out of this cycle of birth and death. And it's very easy to get out in terms of the process. The process is easy. It's a chant, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, regularly with, with attention, with as much devotion as we can, and associate with and hear about the glories of the Lord, chant the glories of the Lord, associate with devotees who are doing that, take only food that's been offered to the Lord, and learn about one's position in the spiritual world and along with one's situation in the material world through books such as Bhagavad Gita, where the Supreme Lord talks about who he is, who we are, what is this material energy, how it works, how the time element works, and what is what is the results of activities in the different modes of material nature. <clears throat> All this knowledge is there to inspire us to understand our real position and work towards uh, attaining that real position, free from the encumbrances of um, the material energy. And so these simple processes, which are readily available and uh, and also supported by the institution, uh, we can take seriously. And if we do it in a serious way, because just to do it is not enough. We have to do it in a way that we actually are focusing. Just like when you do something, you have a particular goal in mind. There are people who do things with no goal in mind, but they're like a leaf blown in a wind. They're simply moving from situation to situation. But a devotee has a goal, and that goal is to develop one's love for Krishna, to get out of this material world and return to the spiritual world, to have direct association with the Supreme Lord eternally in loving devotional service which is the constitutional position of the living beings, not foreign to our nature. What we are trying to achieve is what we're with who we are really are. In this material world, we take on various designations and the various descriptions, but all of these are temporary and they are not, um, uh, they're not our true identities. Just like it says here, the dream state may provide you with a certain uh, experience, but because it's a dream, it's only temporary. So this is this is a waking dream, and that is a sleeping dream. But still, this is also a dream because we're in the when we're thinking we're something we're actually not. But when we know who we are, then we can focus on that, and we know that I am a spiritual being. I have nothing to do with this world. But therefore, let me use my time, whatever time I have left, to begin to practice Krishna consciousness. Satam prasangam mamatirya Satam prasangam mamatirya vandito bhavanti ritkarna rasayana kata. And one should hear and chant the glories of the Lord in the association of the devotees. And that will awaken one's attraction for Krishna. As that attraction increases, it becomes an an attachment. And as that attachment increases, it turns into affection for Krishna. 
when that affection develops to a certain degree, it becomes pure love for Krishna. So through the process of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord and rendering service to the Lord in various ways, one can again regain their natural spiritual identity uh, free from the encumbrances of this material world. People are always trying to solve the problems of the material world by creating various types of programs and plans. But if we, if we get out of the material world, we've solved the problem. So the process of devotional service is the solution to all problems because it doesn't relegate one to another, a different position in this material world and brings one out of the material world. And therefore, all of the problems that we face in this world are also gone when we remove ourselves from the activities of the, the three modes of the world. Okay, so uh, this is a very interesting verse and her part it gives us a little insight on what is the reality of this existence that we are here. It's not false, but it is temporary. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much Maharaj. Inside uh, class, so we just have to know that we are uh, dreaming, in, uh, like how we wake up from the dream. We think that uh, everything is temporary, same way we have to think that, that uh, this material world is our dream. And we have to come out of that uh, dream uh, to reach the Supreme Personality of God. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for such a wonderful class. And uh, about uh, the Brahmachari who has reincarnated, you said, right? Uh, so, uh, what is the name of that Brahmachari, Maharaj? The name of the uh, the uh, girl who was a Brahmachari? It's a girl now. Ah, okay. She was a Brahmachari in her previous life. Mm -hmm. Died in a car accident. Okay. Well, on sacred time, but this brahmachari had developed an attachment for the, from this for this Indian girl, and when she, when he died, he took birth as an Indian girl in Krishna consciousness. Okay. He writes okay. about. It. Thank you, thank you so much, Maharaj. So uh, I do. I can, I could, you know, I can. Um, there is a whole. He writes a whole uh, long article explaining all of her past and her present situation. Let me see if I can remember her name. Ratnavali. Her name is Ratnavali. And she's in, uh, she's in London. She's a member of the... Uh, okay, let me tell you what written the name. Tribunath Das. Tribunath Das. Let's think about this, written the name of the Brahmachari. Ah. Yeah, he she was, became Ratnavali. Yes, he was a Brahmachari in Scotland. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, very nice class. Thank you so much, Sri Devi Mataji. Uh, I'll just check on it. Yeah, Sri Raghavadas is given, right? And sorry, incarnation of Sri Raghavadas. Okay. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. So, do you have any questions? Please go ahead. Shukukar Prabhuji, please. Hare Krishna, yeah. Maharaj Chalimad. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. So, you are taking my wonderful mind. class. Maharaj, you told that uh, the material life, is a, material life is a dream. But actually, in the material life, when we see dream, when we wake up, sometimes we see that some elephant is coming to, you know, push us. Then we cry and get up. We, but then there is no elephant at all. But in the material world, we are living... When we are getting hurt, the blood is coming. So it is not dream. It is true. And, you know, somebody loses their hand or somebody loses their eyes. So is, is, is it really true or it is a dream? It's a dream. The pain is coming, no. But in the dream, what we what we suffer, the pain doesn't, we don't feel it. No, we just thought it's the memory. And but here, we are suffering through the real 
asking, no, so how it is a dream? I'm not able to ask. Well, give me a chance and I'll answer it. The answer is, Sorry, even in the dream, you experience things on a physical level too. And you sometimes mm -hmm. feel fearful in the dream. And people, there are people that have died in the dream too because of, of the fear that they experience in the dream. So in other words, they even lose their physical body because the experience is on the subtle platform with the mind and the intelligence in the dream state. And on the, when, on the gross platform, the body is included in it. So there is mental pain. There is also bodily pain too. Bodily pain can cause us to, you know, be debilitated. And mental pain also is another form of suffering. In fact, it's even worse, mental pain. People don't commit suicide out of bodily pain. They commit suicide when they're, when they're distressed through the mind. So uh, it's just another form of a dream because we are not the physical body and we are not the subtle mind. We are the soul within it. Prabhupada makes the distinction between these two existing states. Of, he said one is a short dream and one is a longer dream. But in the dream, I don't know why we are envying people. But only it's a dream. <laughs> So why should I hate somebody? Why should I love somebody? It's only a dream. Yeah. It is wonderful to understand, but difficult to apply. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we're, in the, we're in the dream state and we're acting according to our identity that we would, we would accept it. So, but it's a, good, it's a good dream that we're hearing your lecture. In the dream also, Chandramani Maharaj is giving a lecture. So it's and, a self-realized dream. Anything, anything that does, does to do with Krishna consciousness is not part of the dream. In, the, in, the, uh, in Krishna consciousness, even if you dream about Krishna in the dream, that is, that is spiritual. Um, we have a we have a Krishna conscious experience. We can have Krishna conscious experience even in our dream state. And for all I say that is just as good as the experience on the waking level. So we are seeing your lecture, Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha Sarva Siddhi. So this is not a dream. This is real because Krishna has sent you to uh, make us self realize. So thank you, Maharaj. So it is a reality in the dream. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. That was really very wonderful. So in a dream, we are in Krishna consciousness. That's uh, really <laughs> wonderful, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. So anyone Thank else? You, Thank you, Maharaj. You. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhupada. So anyone else? Um, Mr. Maharaj, please go ahead. Hmm. Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, Gola Chandra Bole, Kota Nidra, Pisa Chira Kole. Thank you, Vinoda, for a sin. Wake up, sleeping soul, wake up. You're sleeping on the witch of Maya. Mm. But the sleep is very enjoyable, that's why we are sleeping more. <laughs> yeah. Even people go to sleep because they think they can enjoy by going to sleep. But it should not be uh, permanent. <laughs> so that is also there. Yeah. yeah. But as we mentioned, you have to use this body to get out of the cycle of birth and death. So this body is a gift. The human form of life is a gift to make a solution to this problem with Constant dreaming, one life after another. So we should be very diligent in using our time to practice Krishna consciousness. Because here's a chance to end all of these illusionary states of existence.
And the soul is by nature pure, eternal, full of knowledge and full of joy. So we're trying to experience these same things in a realm that doesn't exist. And therefore we struggle. But there is a reality that is concomitant to our existence as a spiritual being, and that's the spiritual one. As there is a material world, there's a spiritual one. But in the spiritual world, is there any sleeping or no sleeping required? There is no, there is no subtle body, so no sleeping, no, no appetite also. Or is spiritual life also? Yeah, they're sleeping in the material, spiritual world. When they sleep, they're not going into an illusion. They're still within their spiritual identity. And their and their sleeping is another form of, of devotional service. They think about they dream about Krishna when they're sleeping. Papa hmm. writes about them. So everything is there. Do we have do we have to sleep in the spiritual world? Is there any tiredness or any hunger is there in the spiritual world or is not there at all? Like it's here we have got the fatigue. It appears to be there. But it's not like the, the sleeping and the tiredness and the anxieties that we experience in the material world. Krishna's performing his pastimes in the spiritual world. Sometimes, as explained, Yoga Maya, Purnamasi, she, she creates the idea that there are demons in the spiritual world too. There's no demons, <laughs> but she creates this concept and Krishna kills the demons in the spiritual world also. And the past mm -hmm. go on like that. And Krishna, the cowherd boys run around Krishna and say, Oh, Krishna, you're so wonderful. You feel that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. That's very nice. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, yeah. Shri Devi Mataji, please go ahead. Thank you. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. My humble obeisances to all the devotees. Uh, Guru Maharaj, today morning in Srimad Bhagavatam class, the speaker said that if we use our material opulences to serve Krishna, then eventually we'll go back to Krishna. But if we use our material opulences for our own sense gratification, we will go to hell. After the class, one young lady said, I have a tendency to watch movies on Netflix. I, will I go to hell? <laughs> how, how can we understand the statement that any material opulence, if it's misused, we'll go to hell? Well, you can use that analogy of hell in different ways. One is the physical aspect of hell and one is separating our self from Krishna in this illusion of enjoyment is another form of hell. It is. When we're, when we're not connected with Krishna, we're living in an illusion and we're struggling and hell means a place where you suffer and you struggle. I call it happiness, but it is. It is simply a diversion away from our pure, our, our natural consciousness. Another form of doubt. It's just like if you read the, uh, the, the fifth canto of the Three Mad Bhagavad Gita, the very end, you have the 28 powers. So, are they actually? Uh, what kind of experience is the soul getting in these hellish conditions? It's the hell of a mental distress, mental anxiety. Bhaktivinoda Thakur says these these uh, these twenty eight hells are on the subtle platform. They're on the subtle platform. Just like we suffer mentally, also that's another form of suffering. So that's a kind of hell also.
थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच महाराज विश्वनाथ प्रभु जी थैंक यू माता जी थैंक यू थैंक यू गुरु महाराज विश्वनाथ प्रभु जी प्लीज गोहे हरे कृष्ण महाराज धन्यवाद प्रणाम गोरी से श्रेयर पापान गुड टू सी यू अगेन um Maharaj I have a question with listen in the class um to understand this statement a little bit better in terms of um when it stated in the Gita I think it the verse uh, we say one who attain um my abode oh son of kunti never take birth again so if we get we go with that um verse how do we understand then going back to godhead have we been there before how are we going back to godhead <laughs> uh, um, yeah well you're saying uh, you can you can attain my abode that means you you're returning back to your natural and happiness you've lost that attainment now you're reattaining it you're attaining it again it's not for the first time our existence is spiritual and this material is more like a temporary feature so therefore we did exist in the spiritual world with krishna like that clear so when we achieve perfection then yeah that's what they home to a jandani nighting up take the sort you you go back home back to god head so you're just going back to where you left it's like you go on a trip and you leave your home and you travel for a long time and then after some time you return to your home so we're just re- so we're just returning to where we left that's right The fact is the fact is that we exist but we cannot exist in this world it's not possible we just keep changing our material identity life and the life so we have no identity really in this material world we just get it we just get a new identity each life but we are the fact that we want happiness we want we don't want to die is an indication of our actual existence everyone wants happiness and everyone wants to live forever these are indications of our actual spiritual nature and so that there is a realm where that there is no death and unlimited happiness which is concomitant or which is similar not similar the same as our nature a fish lives in water you know and so the fish finds its in its existence in the water we're trying to find our existence in a place that is contrary to our nature therefore mm-hmm. we're always struggling 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 always in anxiety always trying to prevent things from happening always trying to make things happen we just struggle all the time because it's on the be here thank you maharaj for clearing that up okay thank, thank you. you so much thank you thank you prabhu thank you maharaj that uh, wonderful reply so It's just temporary. We have to struggle and get the love of God and go back. Our Raj Prabhu, please go ahead. Thank you, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, if this, if this world is, if, if this is all temporary, is it also all temporary for all of those souls who have somehow fallen into uh, an atheistic or totally demoniac tendencies? and living a very hellish existence is it still temporary for them well krishna krishna mentions that in the bhagavad gita in the 60th chapter for those who 
who are envious and atheistic, I cast them into the demoniac species life after life. So it is temporary because this material manifestation is temporary. So, but they'll continue to recycle from birth and death, life after life, until they actually come to Krishna consciousness. So for them, it's also temporary, but it's continuous. Same. And will they all come back to Krishna? When, when this material manifestation ends, then all living entities merge back into the body of Mahavishnu. Atheists, non-atheists, everybody goes back in the anyone who's living in, in the material existence re-enters the body of Mahavishnu, stays there for the interim period, which is billions of years, and then again manifests their existence of doing the next creation according to the, the, the cosmic clock <laughs> and come back out again. So yeah, they can continue the cycle and Life after life after life. See, Maharaj. And they be saved. There's a chair. Every, anyone can be saved if they somehow or other come in contact with a devotee of the Lord and recognize the benefit of, of coming in contact with Krishna's representative then they can gradually extricate themselves from this cycle of birth and death. You can't go back to the spiritual world with the material desires. It's not possible. This is the place where, for having desires contrary to Krishna. This is the material world. It's like a jail. And those who don't follow the laws of the state break the laws, they can get punished and they're put in jail. So as long as they continue to work against the laws of God, they will continue to reset the cycle of this birth and cycle of birth and death. Uh, I can't remember the verse. It's, it's in the 16th chapter. I think it's um, I can't remember which but the Lord says, I cast the demoniac species uh, in different, I cast these living entities in demoniac species life after life after life. It's like one, 16th chapter, something like verse uh, 21, 20, somewhere around there. I can't remember. You can read it. <laughs> So sad, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Prabhu. But anyone can be saved. They could uh, somehow or other they come in contact with a devotee of the Lord. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Scarlet Blom. Yeah, Tadaham Dusayan Puram. That's the word. Yeah. Bring it back up. That's a nice word. Sam Sare Narada Manshikya Sam Asubam Asura Eva Yoni Shu. Those who are envious and mischievous were the lowest among, I perpetually cast into the ocean of material existence into various demonic species of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Prabhuji. Scarlet Blown. Prabhuji or Mataji, please go on. Hi, Krishna, and thank you for the wonderful class. Um, may I ask what would you give for advice to a person who has suffered all his life and being uh, having very very bad life and tortured and so on and try to just uh, 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 survive its life, but then this person get to learn that this is a a, a jail and uh, 
he he gets to hear that the warden is your father and see everything what you're going through, see that you're tortured and, and so on and so on. But then when you uh, get free, you get to love your father, even though that your father saw that you was tortured, you was beating to death, did nothing, just stand there and look and did nothing. But now you, sh you should respect your father, you should love your father. But this person says, okay, I will respect my father, of course. I'm going to follow all the rule and uh, regulation. I will do it with all respect. But how can I, uh, how can I start love him also? I can respect, I can follow everything that he's telling me, all the order that he gave me, I will do it respectfully and law abide it. But how can I love this person? I don't know what love is because I, I didn't learn. I didn't learn what love is. Mm -hmm. so what would you give for advice to this person? How can this person uh, get to have love in, 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 in himself? It may be practically impossible because they never experienced love. Those who live that life also become like that. They they want those who are tortured also become torturers of others after some time. So they don't even un, they only understand that one experience that they have in life. Unless they get somehow some mercy from uh, from a pure devotee or someone who is a representative of Krishna in some way, they will continue. So. It's their good fortune that they can recognize that there's something better than where they are at and what they're experiencing. But people are conditioned by their desires and by their experiences. And, and then the reactions to their experiences just condition them in the same way. It's very difficult to keep someone out to love in that. Um, all you can do is pray for them and, and just hope that they come in contact with someone who's their well-wisher and, and if they have to be able to recognize them. There are many people who came in contact with Srila Prabhupada but they couldn't recognize his position or, or, the, or who he actually was. So therefore they, didn't, well, they weren't able to take advantage. When Krishna was here, it says that millions of people associated with Krishna and saw Krishna, but only between 100 and 200 actually knew he was the Supreme Personality of God. So, um, it can only be awakened by one's good fortune somehow. Uh, to help a person like that is to give them some service to do and let them do some service. By that service, they can develop some sukriti, some good fortune. And by that good fortune, they may, may come in contact with um, a spiritual master. But otherwise, you know, it's, um, they're subjected to their experiences. And the impressions that those experience leave. We see it when people grow up in an abusive childhood. As they grow up, they become abusers later on in life. Abuse become the abusers. And those who know psychology and have experience, they know. Those who grow up in a loving way, they tend to be loving towards others. Uh, this person that I know, he, he, he have never, never, never hurt anyone or do anything bad to anyone. He's very, very, very kind person. Very kind person. Try to be kind person that I can say. He's, he have never hurt anyone. No one can say anything bad about him. So he has tried to be good. But when when I tell him about that you have to love your father still, he says, I don't I, I respect him, 
But why should, what is love? I respect him. I follow the order he gave me. I take care of it. But what is love? I don't know what love is. Hmm. Love means to serve someone for the benefit of that person. That's love. I, I, I'm sorry, with the benefit, I, I didn't hear. Love is, is not something, just a feeling or an emotion. Love means to do something for someone that will benefit that person, that will make that person happy. That's love. Yeah, that's an okay. indication of love. When that same mood continues and increases, then it becomes actual an emotional experience. If you want to love someone and you don't have love for that person, serve them, that's all. Thank you. By that service. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you so much, Mataji, for that <laughs> wonderful question. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for that uh, explanation of definition of love. So, oh. love is nothing. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> expect anything return from them. So, that's how the love works. So, so thank you so much, Maharaj. Shukakar Prabhuji, do you have any more questions? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Maharaj, uh, now uh, you were telling that, uh, that Mataji's question she was asking that. His father has already given trouble to the boy and he has not got any love. So from the scriptures, we know that in the last life, if you have tortured the father, that's why the father is coming and torturing me now. From the scripture, what we hear is that every action has got equal and opposite reaction. That is one thing which came in my mind. Now, about that, you said sometime in the spiritual world, the animals may come to you. That sometime the demands will come. So... From the Agasur, what we see is when the Gopas were going inside Agasur mouth, they knew that it's a snake. And one boy said, I will not come. Then they said that see, Krishna will save us. No, he saved us from Putana, he saved us from um, Bakasur, he saved us from um, all all the demands. So so much of so there is no anxiety in the spiritual world, no, Maharaj. Even if any demon comes or anything, Krishna is always with us, and we are remembering Krishna always. Like Prahalada, that consciousness is 24 by 7, only remembering Krishna. And when you remember Krishna, nothing can touch us. Is it that way that there will be no fear, there will be no anxiety? They will just keep playing, then the men come. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And boys were standing there, and one boy was saying, Oh, look. It's a cave. Another boy said, "No, it's a, it's a, it's a demon." Oh, really? All right, let's go inside and play. Ah, oh, well, demon. That's okay because Krishna will save us. Don't worry. So they went. <laughs> so you don't have to worry as long as you do your service. Krishna will save you. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hi, so whatever comes and goes, uh, we have to have that complete faith on Krishna. But to get that faith in this uh, conditioned life is really very difficult for a conditioned fallen soul like me. So we have to bless us all, Maharaj, to get that uh, faith uh, on Krishna and to chant uh, profusely for uh, returning back to him. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, so I don't see any more questions or comments on the chat box. So thank you so much, Maharaj, for that uh, very wonderful uh, uh, explanation about this material world, saying that it is dream. And in this dream, we are hearing Krishna Katha every time. So that will help us to remember uh, Krishna and keep. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, and uh, for giving your valuable time and association. And we request you to come on this forum uh, frequently to give us such a uh, nice Krishna Kata. And that was really a very wonderful Krishna session also. I, I thoroughly enjoyed Thank you so much. So all our devotees, uh, let's pay our obeisances to Maharaj. Vancha Kalpa to Krishna Krishna. Jai. 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 Jai